So what is going on everyone, Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be going over iPadOS 15 Beta 1 in its entirety because with the original demo that I did and my initial reactions, we kind of just went over the surface level of all the features that came to iPadOS but we're going to be talking about the new messaging features, the security features, all the iPadOS features that were spoken of so definitely stay tuned, it's going to be probably a little bit of a long one but we're going to try to uncover pretty much everything that we can find with iPadOS 15. Also, if you guys notice a little bit different camera angle, we're using a new lens. It should be a little bit wider, so I don't know if I look a little bit different. Let me know if you guys notice anything different down below. But without further ado, let's get this video started. Boom. So let's get started, everyone. I'm going to have timestamps down below to make you guys go through this a little bit quicker if there's only certain things that you want to see. But to begin with, we're going to get right into it. We have the new home screen, right? This looks a little bit different. It looks a little bit new. We now have widgets of different sizes all over the screen. And I tried to keep it as close to what I had before, which was that today view over to the left hand side, because unfortunately you don't have the today view anymore, right? So this is where the bugginess starts to kind of come in a little bit. So you technically can still slide to the left. And you have this, right? This is what the today view used to be. And you used to be able to keep this pinned on your home screen. You can no longer do that. And then another thing that's been happening is that I can't get rid of these. Look, I'm pressing the minus button. I cannot get rid of these widgets. So these widgets are stuck right there. So I'm hoping with beta two, they get that all fixed up because I've reset this iPad now four times to alleviate this issue because I want to be able to delete these, but I can't. Right, I can move them around, I think. So if I grab this, yeah, I can move them around, but I can't actually delete those, and I don't really know why. So that's the first bug that I've mentioned or that I've seen with iPadOS 15 Beta 1. But again, if we go to the home screen, you can see that now you can long press anywhere on the home screen, you can add widgets to wherever you would like. You now have some new widgets, like you have a contacts widget. The files widget actually changed a little bit, so we had this one before, but now we have this huge one which can be added. So if I want to add this one, boom, it, again, it shifts everything over. So even though we get a little bit more customization on the screen, we're still only being able to add it from top left to bottom right, and that's how it stays like that. So if I want to delete it, these do delete, which is nice. But then again, if I delete it, look, my entire screen is all messed up now. So now if I want to re refix it or everything, I just got to move everything over, make sure it's how I like it. And for the most part, it's the same. I think these two are just swapped, but I don't want to touch them right now. That is a new widget screen, and I'm trying to see if there's any other new widgets in here, which I did find. So there's a new Find My to be able to kind of track your people or locations at all times. There's a new Game Center one. There is a new, I believe, a Mail one, but I don't use Apple Mail, so that's not in here. There is a new Mail one, and that's pretty much it in terms of the actual widgets, right? But I guess it's nice. It's to each their own. I did prefer the Today View. Like, I wish we could keep the Today View and then also rearrange however we want right here. But for now, this is what we're dealing with. And then one more thing with the widgets. So if I want to, again, long press, let's say I want to add the recently played or maybe, you know, another weather one, but the same size and I want to create a smart widget. So if I go on here, lay it over, I now have my smart widget, which I can clear up and move over. But now to edit it, right, I can now, I believe, tap it. And now you can edit it this way. So there's a new UI when actually changing the smart stack for the widgets. But I'm going to delete this one because I don't need two weather widgets doing their thing. So this is my home screen. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I, you know, for now, this is what I want to do. But again, there's going to be a lot of stuff moving forward and a lot of different widgets that I'm going to be adding. The next new feature has to be the new app library. So this is a feature which I'm very glad they brought over. It's a feature that I didn't know I needed until iOS 14. And there's two ways to actually access the app library. Very normally, just like on iOS 14, you swipe over to the left. There's your app library. It's sorted by suggestions, categories, things like that. Then you also have the app drawer, so you can literally search as much as you want, right? And you can see that, again, a little bit buggy. Look, the keyboard isn't there right now. So again, I'm just kind of showing off the bugs and what to expect when dealing with a beta one operating system. But the other way to actually access is right here on the bottom right. So this is like your app library icon. You cannot move it. So it stays on the bottom right. I tried to move it around. You can't move it, but this is another way to access it. And you can actually turn it off if you go into settings go to home screen and dock and then show app library and dock, turn that off and then it's gone. And then the only way to access it is by swiping to the right, but I actually like to keep it on. So I'm going to leave it on right there because if I do need to access something from a multitasking standpoint, 
then that does help out. Although, as we go into multitasking, it's gonna be a little bit different. Another awesome one that finally came in, which is something I don't know why Apple didn't put it on the iPad until now, but if you go into settings, we go into battery life, do you guys see that right there? That is what I call a low power mode. So now my shortcut, which I have to automatically go to low power mode at 50%, will now work. Although, I haven't actually done that shortcut yet, but now you have a low power mode, it works the same way as low power mode on the iPhone. You now have the yellow, the yellow battery. It just kind of helps you save those last remaining 20%. So automatically at 20% it goes to that or ask you if you want to, but I like that we now have the option to go with a nice little low power mode. And now let's go into Safari because Safari is one of the apps that got a crazy revamp, right? So it, Safari looks very, very different here. Let's get out of here. I don't want to get copyrighted with ads or anything like that. So this is Safari, right? So you can see that up here, it now looks like we have multiple URL bars, which is kind of weird. Like I'm not a big, big fan of it quite yet, but let's X out of these. Let's do one at a time. Well, now we have zero tabs open, right? So let's go into, you know, ESPN.com. You can see that it's very, very different. You no longer have any options over here on the top, right? All your options are in this little three dot section, which gives you the read later to reload, to share. So you can no longer even refresh from pressing here. You have to, it's a, you know, a double process, even though I think most people, you know, refresh their page by doing one of these. But again, it's just something to think about. And then the next thing that changed with Safari is actually on the side. You now got a sidebar view to kind of organize everything nicely. So you have your tabs right here. You can go into a private tab just by clicking that. You can go to anything that's been shared with you. Look at your bookmarks and all your bookmarks are nice and saved. So everything is still there. Reading list and then history. So if I go back to my tabs, let's see what this button does. So you can actually add group tabs and things like that. So that's good to go. And then other than that, it's still Safari. So the toolbar just looks a little bit different or the URL bar looks different. All of your options are now inside of here. And then your tabs now look different. So if I want to keep adding tabs, you can see that the tabs just look a little bit different, right? It's no longer really a tab. It's now more of a button, a little UI change. But overall, I guess I kind of like it. So not too bad. And now this is a perfect segue into multitasking, right? Because if you guys can see, there's these three little dots right there. If you press on those little dots, you get this new feature, which is a new split screen feature, right? So split screen has been around for a little while now. The way that you used to access it is by going down here to the bar or going down to the dock, grabbing a Safari, moving it over, and now you have two instances of Safari, which is back then was awesome. And then if you even want to have a third instance, you grab this Safari again, put it towards the middle, and now you have the iPhone version of it, right? So that was the old multitasking. Now I wanna show you what this little three dot thing does here, right? So now you have a full screen, a half screen, and then a slide over screen. So if I press on this half screen, it moves it over to the right, and not only that, it now opens up your entire you know, home screen to now pick whatever app you want after that. So you no longer have to have your apps that you wanna multitask, you don't have to have them down here. You can literally go through your entire operating system, pick the app that you want. So for instance, if I wanna do, let's open up another Safari tab. So now I got Safari side by side working nicely. And then if I click on this again, I can actually now see there's the app shelf. So here you can add as many instances of Safari as you would like and go through whichever one you want and then pick that one. And let's say, let's go to apple.com with this one. So now you got your side by side view here working fine and dandy. And then if I click again, and if let's say I want to put it into slide over, I just click this button and now my other multitasking screen goes full screen and now this one goes into slide over. So now you can see that, which is beautiful to see. And it works the same way as iOS 14. So you can still multitask with this one and get rid of it and all that good stuff. And then again, the app shelf is for instances of Safari itself. So you can see, look, look at all the different Safari instances that I have. So if you have multiple instances of an application, then those instances will go into the app shelf. So it's only for the same instance of the application. And obviously it's gotta be compatible. So probably not everyone will have it, but obviously all Apple's native apps will have it. So the next thing that I wanna show you is the actual multitasking. So after I open up a bunch of apps, you can see that multitasking from here over looks very familiar, right? These are all the apps that I've been open, but then you can see that now when you open it up, you get this little sliver here. And what that is, is actually the multitasking or the apps that are open in slide overview. And you can just delete them just like before. So you just swipe up just like any other application. So that is a brand new thing. That little multitasking feature was not there before. Thought I'd bring that up to you guys. People did want to know also if we got new wallpapers with this update. So if we go to general, no, nope, if we go to wallpaper, go to choose a new wallpaper and go to stills, this is the new wallpapers that we got with iPad OS 15. And if we go into light mode, then you can see that they change a little bit. Overall, they're kind of cool. Again, not my flavor, but 
to each their own. So those are the new wallpapers. And then another thing that we thought we were gonna get was a brand new control center. But you guys can see that control center is exactly the same minus two things. So if we go into the settings, let's get out of the wallpaper. Let's go to control center. You can see that there's a new low power mode, which I already added to my control center. And then there is the actual focus, which is by default in your control center. So those are in there, those are brand new options. And then focus, if you tap on it, it's just a way to customize and modify your do not disturb to certain situations. So if you have a situation where you're at work, but you don't want any of your social apps to be pinging you or anything like that, then then you put on you know your focus for work. Or if you're on the personal side, you put your focus in for personal. And if you want everybody to be able to reach you, then that's what's gonna happen. So it's basically a do not disturb for certain categories of events or certain instances during your day where you don't want certain apps to reach to you. This next one has to do with the keyboard and then also text editing essentially. So if I wanna say sub to the channel, you can see that it's there, but now Apple actually brought back the magnifying glass and they made it a little bit nicer and a little bit better, a little bit wider too. So this was something that Apple removed that we had for a little while, but I'm glad they brought it back and the magnifier is black whenever you're doing any text editing or anything like that. And now let's actually dive into FaceTime. So if we go into FaceTime, it has a brand new look. What's up guys? As you can see, you know, it's still following me around because of the new iPad OS 15 and what's it called, center stage. But you can see now that we have new FaceTime and then create a link. So create a link is there for people that are not on an iOS or iPad OS device or Mac OS device really. So basically anybody with an Android or Windows computer will now be able to join your FaceTime calls, which is something kind of crazy that Apple's opening it up. But I think Apple's doing it because they know that they have a great Zoom, Microsoft Teams competitor, any other video chat collaboration tool. Apple now has a competitor for that. So that's awesome to have. You know, it's gonna take a while for Zoom and all those other companies to go down. But I think if people adopt FaceTime, because now you can share your screen on any of your iDevices or Mac devices, you can share it, you have the share place, you can watch stuff with people at the same time. You can now interact with people who don't have iOS devices. So Apple is really gonna start to slowly take everything over and just keep it under their wall garden because that's what they do. So another one has to be inside of the notifications. So notifications, they actually look a little bit different. So you can see that they're a little bit smaller, Look, at, especially like the ones that don't need to take up space. They're finally all different sizes, but they're also always a lot smaller than they were before. So that's awesome from a notification standpoint. And then another cool one is if I actually lock the screen, go here and swipe down, now through the lock screen, I can still use Spotlight. So that's really cool. Spotlight being able to use it without having to actually be on the actual device. Now, obviously it makes you scan your face after you try to open something, but hey, now you have Spotlight through the lock screen. There's a couple more new things that happen. So the next one's gonna have to be the quick note. So this only works on the bottom right of the iPad with an Apple Pencil. So if you try to do it with your finger, it's not gonna work, it just brings up multitasking. If you try to do it on the left side with the pencil, it's gonna take a screenshot, which I don't wanna do. So here you go from the bottom right, you pull it up, little floating window, and there is the actual quick note. So we'll do thanks for watching. I can't spell, but let's see if the shortcuts work. So, yep, so I should be able to erase things. So everything works pretty well. It's a resizable window. So this is kind of like the dream that we all wanted. We wanted applications to be able to do this, which they haven't, guys. So that's what it is. You can see that it's all around there, and then you can just press done, and it goes away. So people have asked me, it's like, what if you're a lefty and you want to use the shortcut for quick notes on this side? So the one thing that I did notice is that if you go to the Apple Pencil settings and you scroll down, you can turn the options off. So left corner swipe for screenshot, you can turn it off. And then right corner swipe for the quick note, you can turn it off, but you can't like switch them. So I can't put the quick note over here. So I can't put the screenshot over here and the quick note over here. It just doesn't let me do it inside of the operating system or inside of the, the settings. Maybe through accessibility, once I keep digging, I'll be able to find it. But hey, that's what we have right now. And then a couple other things, I'm actually going to plug in an SSD and show you guys how the Files app works. Okay, so we are now plugged in to my Rad Power SSD. We have it right here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up, so let's do it the new way. Pull this off to the side. Open up a new files window. So let's go into my LumaFusion projects, into video projects, and let's move it onto the iPad itself. So let's grab a big one or the biggest one I can find. It's about 2.48 gigs. Let's move it over here. And then you're gonna see up here, you're gonna see a little 
pie chart that you have to click on. So I drop it, click on the pie chart, and boom. There is a progress bar that we've been wanting for so, so long. So it's not totally frictionless and it's not in your face. You do have to like click on that little circle and it's only visible if there's like enough time for it to happen. Like you saw 2.5 gigs transferred over very, very quickly. So again, we do have a progress bar and that's awesome to have. And then the very last thing that I did want to mention was the universal control. So universal control is going to be awesome because it's going to allow you to use a single keyboard right here to control a Mac and an iPad without having to switch Bluetooth connections or change operating systems or do sidecar. It's going to literally just work flawlessly between the iPad and the Mac computer. So I think that's the step that Apple's taking. Instead of making the iPad a replacement, they're making it a supplemental device that you now need or are going to want to have with your iMac or with a MacBook Air or with a MacBook Pro. But that's pretty much most of the things that I found. Leave some comments below some other things that I've missed, but I'm definitely going to have a part two probably kind of going through all the settings and the accessibility and things like that. But let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. And that is pretty much going to do it for this video, everyone. Like we saw within iPadOS 15, obviously we got a bunch of new features. We're still in beta. It's still a little bit buggy. It's not perfect. Like I wouldn't recommend that if you have a main machine that you go out and install the beta versions of any of them, either iOS, iPadOS, or even a new um, Mac OS Monterey or Monterey, however you say it. Like don't install them quite yet. Wait for a couple more betas to come out if you're really, really yearning to get into it, but you have it on a main device. If you have secondary devices and by all means load them on because you're pretty much 90% of the way there from a like performance and bug issue standpoint. Like it's a pretty clean version for a first beta, but it's still not perfect yet. And I don't want to make the recommendation a little too soon. I'd rather wait a little bit and then make the recommendation. But like I said, iPadOS 15, it definitely left a couple of things that we yearned for, like that secondary monitor support, multitasking could have been a little bit better. But overall, let's look at it in a vacuum, right? We were never promised anything. Yes, we had the M1 and everybody thought M1 on the iPad Pro meant we we're gonna get something insane, something amazing. And we didn't get that, but again, we weren't promised that we were gonna get that. So at the same time, it's hard to be upset about it and just be thankful that we're getting new features that are going all the way down to like the second gen iPad Pro or even the first gen iPad Pro, I believe. But I'll leave a comment down below to let you guys know all the compatibility of these things. But that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you guys thought. Did you guys update to the beta one? Are you guys going to wait for the public release or sign up for the developer beta? Also, I know that there's a lot of videos already on how to install the beta software. But if you guys want one from me, by all means, let me know and we'll definitely get one of those done. And if you made it to the end of the video, comment down below that you made it, that you're a legend, that you guys are awesome. But that's going to do it. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, 